at Psalms chapter 63. This is the Hayward Family Bible Study, it's where we go through the Bible chapter by chapter, and sometimes we break the chapter down into several nights. We've gone from Genesis to Revelation, gone back to Genesis, and we're in Psalm 63. And we welcome you to our family. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, here we are in the Lord. A Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. It's not a very good place, wilderness. That sets forth the, the point of where we are in Psalm 63. It's not a luxurious place. It's not in the palace. It says, O God, thou art my God. That's important. Because there are places in the Bible that says, Well, you, will you call upon your God? Well, your God is, 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 is great. And many times it's not your God, my God. It should be my God. That's what David says, my God. David's God is my God too. Early will I seek thee. Early in the morning. First thing you do when you get out of bed, you know, when you open up your eyes or even before you, thank God. Seek God. You wake up early in the morning you know, just to get up or... You know, uh, you know, the, uh, do your business in the battle. Pray to God. Thank God. Thank God that you're able to get up out of bed. And if you're not able to get out of bed, thank God you're living another day. We're to thank God for all things. Rejoice evermore. Give thanks. I will seek thee. Go after. Go get. Inquire. Search out God. My soul. That's your inner, that's your that's your eternalness. Thirst is for thee. Now remember, he's in the wilderness. And when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they needed water from that spiritual rock. But there was no water. They needed a manna because there was no food. A wilderness is a place that probably does not supply water and food for you, naturally. And whatever the state is, David's in the wilderness, probably no food, no water, a lack thereof. And he's like, you know what? You know what's more important than water? I thirst for thee, Lord. Bible says we're to uh, try the Lord. See that he's good. We're to eat the word. We're to take the word as milk. We're to take the word as honey. Jesus said, I am the water of life. Word of thirst. My flesh. Now look at that. Soul and flesh. And usually the flesh is against God. It's that enmity against God. It does not like the spirit, Paul said. It says that the spirit and the flesh are at enmity with each other. He says, my flesh. Longest for thee in a dry and thirsty land. That's the wilderness. Where no water is. So he there's no water here. And there's a time when David's in battle, he's, a, he, he's talking and his men are around, he says, oh, if I could just get a drink of that water at the well by Bethlehem. And it's true that the three mighty men go in there and attack the army to get that water for David, and he pours it out. And David's like, there's no water here. I am thirsting for God. He's probably thirsting in his flesh. His flesh is probably saying, give me something to drink, will you? And yet he says, I am seeking after God, and my flesh longeth for thee. Even my flesh, Lord David said, if I could find a nice cold spring pond, I'd rather have you. And that's not really the flesh. Because if the flesh would say, it's Sunday morning, time to go to church, just... The spirit said, and the flesh like, I want to go to bed. I want to stay in bed. Come on, I'm tired. Sunday night, you know, the spirit says, go to church, learn something. And the flesh is like, just sit down and relax. Let's get a bowl of popcorn, watch a little TV. We don't really need to get dressed again and go back out. David's flesh is not like that. David's flesh is like, I'm thirsty. I'm in the wilderness. But I want God. That's remarkable. 
And when the Bible says a man after God's own heart, even the, I mean, listen, David had the flesh, David had the lust of the eyes, David had the lust of the flesh, Bathsheba, but look at here. And the body needs, number one, it needs air. You can live longer without water than you can live without air. And then next, you need the water. And you can live longer without food. You'll need air, water, and then third, you need food. David says, I need the Lord. I need God. Today, we're 2020. We're in March. We're, we're just, uh, this virus. And people need toilet paper more than they need God. They're not repenting. They're not trying to get right with God. And the moment that it gets stocked up, we're going to go back and get more, more hoarding. And they're not hoarding after God and seeking God and His righteousness. To see thy God's power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. I'm in the wilderness. I've been where the tabernacle is. And David describes the tabernacle. It's a place of curtains. Lord God, I am here, and I am in the walls of cedar. You're down there in curtains. And David says, you know what? Those curtains is so well because your presence is in that holy of holy. And there are people out there with their church building. How spectacular our church building is. And it's as dead as a hammer on the beach because God ain't there. Now, I've been in church buildings where there was no God. And I've been amongst church brethren. Big difference between brethren and the building. And it was a few people and I felt the presence of God. And it's magnificent and it's wonderful. And David says the power, the great power of God. The power of God that he is able to keep David alive. The power of God to keep David on that throne. Listen, David had his son assert the authority of the throne. Uh, Solomon had his brother try to assert the authority of that throne. David had his general Joab murdering people. David had King Saul chasing him and wanted to kill him. And the power of God has kept David alive. And the power of God is that David will be resurrected one day. And he will sit as the prince to Jesus Christ, who is the king of all kings. David's coming back, Ezekiel says. And David will be in the, in the land. And David's throne will be given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And David says, thy glory. That's Jesus. One day, David's going to see Jesus Christ. So I have seen thy sanctuary. And it's not a building, it's the people. It's not where two or three bricks are together, two or three stained glasses are together, two or three doors are together. It ain't that. It's where two or three are gathered together. In my name. There I am, the midst of Because of thy loving kindness is better than life. And what is the loving kindness of God? We love him because he first loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God shed forth his love for us that he came to Calvary and suffered and died for us. Loving kindness that God says, hey, I know what you are. You're a sinner. And I'll show forth my long suffering. I'll show forth my mercy. I'll show forth my grace that you may have life. And David says, better than life. John the Baptist says, if you don't have the Son, you don't have life, you get the wrath of God. That ain't life. According to the word of, of John the Baptist, he said, hell is no life, even though hell is eternal life. He says, he that has the Son has everlasting life, and he that has not the Son shall not see life. But you will live eternally. But the wrath of God. There is no life in hell. And there's no life in the lake of fire that burns forever, but you'll be there forever. The life is to be with God and His Son and Jesus. My lips shall praise Him. And that's what these Psalms are about. This is what the story of David's about. It's about God. Joab says one time when David ordered the murder of Uriah. 
He says, if David gives you, a, gives you a hard time, you quote this scripture back to him. Joab knew that David would quote scripture. This will I bless thee, David says, while I live. How are you doing, Christian? Are you living in blessing the Lord? Bless. You know what bless means? Making the Lord happy. And if we make the Lord happy while we are living, alive Christians, to present ourselves a living sacrifice, Paul said, if we are blessing and making God happy, when we get to glory, yes, we're going to have wood, hay, or stubble. We all will. But will it not be if we, if we bless and make God happy, will he not say to us, well done? What well done? You made me happy. You blessed me. I will lift up my hands in thy name. It's okay to lift up your hands. You don't go crazy as a, as a Pentecostal. You're showing God, look, here's my hands, fill them. Here's my hands, Lord. This is how much. I can't even, as far as the east is from the west, the Bible says. In thy name, no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. My soul. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's a theme through this song. My soul. My eternalness, God. Shall be as satisfied as with marrow. And that's what's inside your bone. That's what helps the white blood cell. That's what gives you strength. That's what gives you healthiness. And fatness. And I don't think David's talking about being a tub of lard. But you got meat on you. And I would assume... By the characteristics of David, David was no fat man. And David was no skinny man. David, and like even you think about Samson, they were muscular men. Jesus Christ was muscular. Jesus Christ, in his human form, walked up and down mountains his lifetime. We went up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem's a mountain. They weren't fat, they weren't skinny, but they were muscular, strong, and that's what David means, fatness. Again, that also comes from tomorrow. It's health, it's strength. God, you're giving me good health. You're taking care of me. David lives to a ripe old age. He lives so old that his body can't produce heat no more. And he died, he's not sick. He's just old. <laughs> Old and old. He had health. The age of his body, I'm trying to say, is what caused his death. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Rejoice evermore, Paul says. What is our mouth doing? What is our life doing? Is it blessing? Is it praising the Lord? Or do we give our credit to politics? Do we give our credit to science? Do, I, do we give our credits to uh, education? Do we give our credits to our pastor? Do we give credits to somebody other than God? I want to thank I want to thank my employer for giving my check Friday. I want to thank how good I am and how great God said thou fool tonight hey, it's going to be required. Praise. Who do you praise? David says, I'll praise the Lord. When I remember thee upon my bed. There we go. It's too bad David couldn't remember thee when he walked upon the rooftop of, the, of, the, of his bedroom. David's not perfect either, you know. David's a sinner like us, but what do you do when you can't sleep? Do you pray? Do you talk to God? I, I, I got, I got, I'm not always like this. Sometimes I struggle with some of my sins on the bed. And I ask God to forgive me. But I do spend time in prayer. I do think of what people I'm praying about. I do seek God, you know, in prayer for myself and for others. 
I meditate, thinking. That, that's prayer. On thee, God. I don't get cross-legged and try to reach out to some rock, some tree, or spiritual nonsense. The God. In the night watches. Now, what is that? David's a military man. David had to go out on night patrol. David had to do his watch. And there are four watches, the Bible says. And in the middle of the night, David went, David, yes, you got the night watch. You, and he protect the troops. While the troops are sleeping, somebody has to make sure nobody comes into camp. And sometimes David had that, that, uh, that tour. David had that watch. And he said, listen, I'd be out there making sure that, that my people were protected. I'd make sure, hey, I'm doing my job. I didn't fall asleep, and I'm thinking about God. I believe David thought about God when he was the little shepherd boy. Listen, you don't go walking up to Goliath and say, I come in the name of the Lord, and that Lord of mine, he took care of that bear, he took care of that lion. You don't do that if you are not close with God. Because thou has been my help. Look at that. What about the rocks? They weren't my help. What about Jonathan? He wasn't my help. God, you're my help. And we get in trouble when we go to help other, other places. You know, when we get a health issue, we go running to the doctor. No, we got to run to God first. That woman that came to Jesus spent all her money on doctors. And I'm not against doctors. Jesus said, they that are sick need a physician. They that are whole don't need a physician. But before you call that doctor's phone number and make an appointment, call upon God and say, God, help. And I'm telling you, since December, well, even before December, when my wife Tracy, with all the illness that she was in her final months, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and there's only one word I could say to God is help or help Lord. I don't even know what to pray for. I don't even know what to ask for. I don't even know what's going on. And still today, many people know I'm looking for a way and I, the finances and, and other things. And I, I wake up in the middle of the night and say, Lord, help. I don't know what. I go to bed, Lord, help. I don't know what. I have no idea, God. I don't know tomorrow. I don't know what you're going to do. And I don't know the decision of what I have in my brain when I'm thinking right now, if you were to do it, <coughs> it would work out and wrong. It would be a destruction of my life. And rather just wait for you. So when I say, Lord, help, and you help, and you take care of it, it is God to help me and not me myself or anybody else. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings, well, I rejoice. Now, God don't have wings. Angels don't have wings. But David, like Jesus said, you know, as a chicken would take care of her broad under the wings. And that would be the protection of birds. They, they, they take their young and they put them underneath their wings and they hide them and they protect them. When a, when a, when a chicken is out in, in, the, in the barnyard and there's a threat, that she makes her moves and all the little chicks come up against mama. And mom is going to protect him. That's what David says. God, I'm coming in. Hide me inside your wings. He ain't got wings. It's figured it. My soul again. Follows hard after thee. I am a straight, narrow path. I am. There's God. I'm going. I'm not going anywhere else. And yet David sinned. We set forth and then we go off in life and we walk the other way. We take an exit. We go sidetrack. We go backsliding. But if we set ourselves, this is what I'm going to do. So when we do get off track, like Pilgrim's Rodham, get off track and he, uh-oh. I just realized that we're not where we're supposed to be. You can get back. How do you get back? You get back by knowing where your track is. You can backtrack to get to the track that you're going to, dear God. Thy right hand. Guess who that right hand is? Well, I always told you that right hand is. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's seated at the right hand of the Father today. Upholdeth me. But those, uh-oh. 
that seek my soul, that want to kill me, want to murder me, want to get rid of me. They have no good intentions of me. To destroy it, they, they want me dead. They want me dead. Shall go into the lower parts of the earth, the grave and hell. And that's probably where the Jehovah Witnesses get, you know, death. There's, there's the grave. There it is. But David has spoken about hell. Jesus Christ has spoken about hell. Paul has spoken about hell. The Bible says H-E-L-L. -L. Idiot scholars with their geek, I mean Greek, hey, Hades. Well, let me tell you. Go to Hades. That's not what they say. And we preach that you might not go to hell. But there's a grave in hell. Where's hell? It's in the earth. It's below the grave. The grave is about six feet. Do you realize when, when they buried people, what David's talking about, they put them in caves. They put them in sepulchers. That's not in the earth. More likely, and, and they say grave, the people I read, I, in the earth, hell. Hell is underneath your feet, the Bible says. I don't think David say his enemies are going to go to heaven. They shall fall by the sword. War. Military. They shall be a portion for the foxes. Their dead bodies are going to be for the wild animals. Jesus says as far as Armageddon, I'm going to call all the followers together and say, Hey, I got a great meal for you. I got the meal of horses. I got the meal of captains. I got the meal of lieutenants. I got the meal of, of private. I got a meal of all the dead armies. That's what it means. You're not going to be buried, what David says. And for the or, for the, the Middle Eastern and the Oriental person, if they die and don't get a burial, whoa, that's serious. But the king shall rejoice in God, the ruler of Israel. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. And that's not cussing. That's, Lord God, I, I, I hope today to do something to please you. Lord God, I hope that my life will be sad. Lord, I'm going to aim my life to be what you want me to be. Lord, I'm going to follow, for, maybe for some, I want to be that Nazarite, the law speaks to. I want to do what you, Lord, I'm going to set forth to do what you want me to do. That's a swear. That's an oath. I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. The one that swears by God shall glory. But the mouth of them that speaketh lies, liars, liars, liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth forever, shall be stopped. You know, when I get to New Jerusalem, there'll be no more liars. That's satisfying. And when I get into the street of New Jerusalem, I will not ever worry about being deceived. I will not have to check any words out. James says that our mouth, our tongue, it, we can't rule our tongue, but in New Jerusalem, we will be able to rule our tongue. We will not lie in New Jerusalem. David has set that forth. There are people who swear to God to do the right thing and the opposition of the people who lie. And that's how God looks at it. 